Welcome to this week's EMBN show. We've got a packed show coming up this week. We're talking about two-wheel drive e-bikes. Nuts. We've got Bike Vault. We've got Where in the World. We've got lots coming up in this week's show. Stick around. Chris, let's talk about two-wheel drive mm. mountain biking. What is that all about? Well, one bike has recently caught my eye is this amazing bike from Christini. Wow. So this is a two-wheel drive e-mountain bike. Um, and you can ride it as a regular bike, pretty much with a flick of, flick of a switch. It's just a rear-wheel drive, standard mid-drive yeah. bike. But you engage that switch, and it engages the front wheel, and it easy when it has traction control as well. Traction? Traction control. Yeah, traction control and two-wheel drive. So can you can you uh, can you go 70 30 or 50 50 or depending on what terrain like if yeah. it was to climb yeah you would want a little bit more traction on the front because you know you're gonna yeah, be yeah, yeah. spinning out the rear. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm not too sure on that one, Blake. But that's a good question. But I quite fancy doing this myself to one of the e-bikes back. We've got those home build bikes that we've made. Yeah, yeah. Now I've got a hub motor in the rear. And I was thinking about putting a front hub motor in the front. Yeah. So essentially, it would be a two-wheel drive bike, but it wouldn't have the fancy drive system. drive system. And it would yeah. be pretty weighty as well, because you'd have to have two batteries, two motors. But then weight, that means good grip, right? Very good grip, Chris. <laughs> like that, in the sand, mm -hmm. in the snow, yeah. in the mud, climbing. Yeah. Oh, it would be cool to like, you can adjust like the, the amount of power you want to yeah. move it it's a little switch yeah, yeah, and like yeah. 50 30 oh and i think you know driving jeff around obviously a four by four system in a jeep when you get off-road in a yeah. slippy sticky situation yeah. that thing can pull you out of anywhere so yeah. it's quite interesting what? to be you know putting that on two wheels i'd like to see that let us know in the comments down below if you want to see chris build a two-wheel drive mountain bike yeah and go get try and get stuck yeah definitely but coming back to it christini say uh, all-wheel drive provides greater control over wet roots and slippery rocks you can power up steeper sketchier hills like you're glued to the side slopes wow. the rear wheel will simply not slip without transferring some of the power to the front wheel in return the front wheel grabs and it prevents the rear wheel from over spinning and it says all-wheel drive works for whether you're pedaling or coasting along you'll even be able to descend with more confidence and corner more aggressively due to the front wheel grip. So that sounds pretty interesting That's to me. Even downhill. Steer. Imagine that pedaling and yeah. trying to turn. It'll yeah. be like <laughs> so, it'll be like a locked diff on a car. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, isn't it? So I'm guessing if that front wheel starts sliding out, yeah, then it, just, it engages yeah. and then just provides drive to the front yeah. wheel. So in theory, I don't know. It sounds it definitely takes some getting used to, oh, but on it paper it definitely works, doesn't it? Yeah, you've seen motorbikes. They have yeah. these shaft-driven two-wheel yeah. drive. I've seen those. Really like high, some of them have like a hydraulic motor on That's the front, it, yeah. and then drive, and drive then, it. I did. I see one from the front sprocket to the front wheel. Some yeah. crazy like converter. There's some wild stuff. If it hasn't on, done it there, I don't know if it's going to come to mountain biking. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a few different versions here. They're all fat e-bike like hardtails, obviously for obvious reasons. Yeah. But I'm guessing they could develop that system into a full suspension bike with all those linkages going on. But that's pretty uh, pretty cool, I think. But the first question I want to ask you is, why do you think we need that in e-mountain biking? I have no idea. Maybe if you're pulling a trailer. <laughs> and I think, you know, I, I understand it for hill climbing, but when we are attempting those big, steep hill climbs yeah. where I think potentially we could need that front wheel grip, mm -hmm. I'm always like nearly looping out. So I'm guessing if you had that front wheel drive, it's front actually wheel. just going to be so you, light yeah. on the front end. It's not you, yeah. actually going to be uh, much use. And I think it's actually going to take away a bit from, you know, the standard e-bikes. So I'm thinking range from the battery is going to be eaten up because you can't have that system. Unless you have two batteries. Exactly. And, and that's I adding think, more weight. Yeah, definitely. And I think coasting along, if you've got that engage, I think that's definitely going to be a lot of drag in the mm. system. That's going to take the speed away, as you mentioned, the rain, uh, range as well. But I think it's time we got one of those bikes here on the show and did a head-to-head -head climbing challenge. Maybe I'll build that homemade bike that I'm talking about yeah. against this and then go head-to-head -head against a I'd standard bike. It. It'd be cool, wouldn't it? I'd love to Let see us it. know what you think in the comments box down below about these two-wheel drive e-bikes. Chris, do you know what time it is? What time is it? News. News. Let's get into it. I'm going to kick it off with something special that Canyon have just launched a new gravel e-bike called the Grail. Now this thing is feather light. It's 15.9 kilos. That is 
super light. Super light. Tell me it? more about it, Chris. Yes, yeah, great looking bike. So they've launched seven different models of this bike uh, in loads of different builds. The cheapest one for the base model is £4,699 up to the CF7, which is £5,699. And that is an amazing bike. As nice. Blake mentioned, they're both super light, 15.9 kilos. They've got that Bosch Performance Line CX motor on there. There's fourth generation one, 500 watt hour integrated battery. <laughs> full carbon frame, SRAM ETAP wireless shifting on that higher end model. And there's a wide range of sizes, all the way from extra small up to extra large. So wow. that looks a really good gravel bike coming from those guys. Yeah, it does. But imagine 15.9 kilos in that. Yeah, super light, That's isn't like it? normal bike. Yeah, and other Bosch news, we've got Tracy Mosley. Now she's just got signed up as an official ambassador for Bosch. So she uh, joins Julian and Absalon and Jerome Clements on that worldwide ambassador program. So that's great stuff for Tracy. And she's been spending loads of time out on her e-bike with her son, Toby, mm. doing some big three hour rides apparently with wow. Toby on board. That's crazy. So that's pretty cra crazy, isn't it? Getting out on those big rides yeah. with a kid on the child seat, you know? Yeah. I think if you did that on a regular bike, that'd be a hell of a workout. I've done it a it? bit. Yeah, this, this is quite hard. <laughs> but we've got some news. We've got a new e-bike drive system mm -hmm. from Nera. Now yeah. this looks crazy. Mm -hmm. Let's let's talk about that, Chris. Yeah, definitely. So this is just like a startup program at the minute. Um, they say that they're developing a regenerative mid-drive e-bike system that mitigates the need for a bicycle cassette and derailleur. Mm. So that's a regen motor and gearbox all in one. So that sounds super excited. So they're currently asking a lot of riders for their input um, about what they use on their e-bikes and all their thoughts and everything. Mm -hmm. So they've got a big survey out there and they want you guys to get involved. So head over to their website, fill that in, and we could see some amazing tech coming on these next you know, breed of e-bike motors. So really exciting yeah. stuff for them. Yeah, now Danny McGaskill mm -hmm. on his slack line. Now this is incredible. It's like free. riding, like walking along a slack line is hard enough, but <laughs> yeah. to ride along it on an e-bike? Mental, isn't that it? That is crazy. Yeah, it's that cool, is crazy. It? Danny always pushing the limits on the e-bikes and another guy that is pushing the limits is Bernard Kerr. Mm. He's back at uh, back on it with his shuttle and he's pretty stylish doing those big stoppies and whipping it around just like he's on his motorbike. Yeah. So amazing stuff from those guys. Coming up this week on the channel, we've got an amazing week of content as always and kicking it off on Friday. We've got things you should never do on your e-mountain bike. So all those things that are definitely gonna cause you a few, a few problems. I had a load of fun with that video, so be sure to check that one out. And on Sunday, <laughs> <laughs> we have a game of bike, e-bike, yeah. e game of e-bike. Chris and I go head to head out at Windhill Bike Park. That was a good day out, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And then on Monday, we're talking about out of warranty. What should you do if your e-bike runs out of warranty or you buy second hand? So now that is mm. going to be a good, interesting video. Right, it's time for comments and questions from the last few videos that we did. And recently, I did a video where I headed out to the trails with a 320 watt hour battery, a 500 watt hour battery, and a 700 watt hour battery, and rode them till they went flat. So that was a big day out. That was a hell of a day out. Yeah, it was like uh, I think I left at seven in the morning and got back at seven, so pretty wow. much 12 hours of riding. So we had quite a lot of feedback from this one. And what's the first one, Blake? We got Dale. He says this would be a great test in eco mode. I hardly ever touch turbo. Did you? I didn't. So that was a full on day in turbo. So yeah, it definitely would be a great video in eco, but that would be a massive day out for me. I think, you know, we're riding so far in eco mode, that'd be probably 150 plus miles for me I'd, to ride by myself in a day, so. I think that would be a bike packing mm, yeah, video. Definitely. You couldn't do Go it. Go on eco. But that would be a big day out for sure. <laughs> probably more than a day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Brian, he says, almost never take my bike out of eco mode. I love the range eco gives me and the workout afterwards as well. Totally agree with you there. The reason we didn't ride eco is like what I've just talked about. That would be a huge day out and probably not possible for one person to do on three different bikes yeah. in a day, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not that fit. Now we've got one from Ben again. This is about eco. He says, good video. I would like to see Chris ride the same five different brands of e-bikes from fully charged to flat in eco in a day. Uh, well, I think you guys- Get him, get him to- uh, Get on a get Jonesy. Jonesy. <laughs> I think you guys are trying to kill me. That'd yeah, be- I would five, like to see it. I would like to see you Five different die. bikes, you know, three, bi uh, three bikes in turbo mode. That was enough for me, but five <laughs> bikes in eco? Yeah. Four. Not going to happen, I'm go afraid. You could, no do, you, could, you could plot them out. You go one day to there, next day you go there. <laughs> no, no, no. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> go to the Alps and do it. Yeah, yeah. 
Right, it's time for my favorite part of the show where we get to see what you guys have been up to on your e-bikes all over the world and kicking it off. Who have you got? Oh, look at this guy. He looks like he's having a cardiac arrest. Oh, yeah. He's got this like pads going to his chest like a bit of a defibrillator, Chris. Getting a bit of a bump start going on. It looks yeah. like this is Kim from the Gold Coast and Queensland, Australia. He's riding a 2018 Specialized Levo Comp oh. and he says it's 62 year olds and riding with a bunch of off-duty firefighters. It's nice to have attached to your bike a set of defibrillator pads for those times when you get a bit bent out of shape. And he says joking, what? of course, so they don't say, actually work. Yeah, no, that's true. That, yeah. <laughs> spit, yeah, we've got one from Eddie. He says he's getting a bit of air time on his specialized Knevo. Uh, he's out in Denmark, he nice. says. It's a great day out on his e-bike with his e-bike fellas, uh, mm. testing out some drops and some jumps. You've had oh. his pregnant and girlfriend his pregnant ride. pregnant girlfriend, look that at that. Ride. That's wow. pretty cool, isn't that's it? Riding cool. some single track. Yeah. Next up, so we've got Ryan. He's learning to jump his Focus Jam squared up at the trails in Newcastle. Looking pretty stylish, yeah, It's looking good. Look at nice. that. Wow. Nice to see that. Yeah. Next up, so this is Barry. So he rides a specialized Kinevo. He's based out in Glencoe, Scotland. Now, this is a pretty cool story, actually. He says, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease six years ago at the age of 39. He says, although I'm very fit and healthy, the disease is slowly robbing me of my mobility and independence. So he'd been struggling with his standard mountain bike and pretty much given up on it. But his parents brought him an e-bike and he's given him, uh, given him, him back some of what Parkinson's has taken away and allowed yeah. him to continue to ride and getting out there and loving it at the moment. That's a good story. So he That's says, I hope story. that other, others in my similar situation could benefit from my experience. So it sounds like you're having an amazing time out there and it's mm. really cool to hear that that e-bike has given him back that, you yeah. know, getting out there ability, getting out there and enjoying his riding again. Yeah, really that's, cool. That is, that's a cool story, that's cool. Definitely. We've got one here, yeah, another one, mm -hmm. last one. is a 13-year-old Julian has been absolutely shredding his lap here over vault out there in New Zealand. Check that out. That is like suicide Whoa. in a hand is Big. amazing. Loving it. Cool, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, good. Taking yeah. a bit of inspiration there, mm -hmm. I think. Nice work. If you guys want to get in on the show to show us what you guys have been doing on your e-bikes, use the upload service and the details of that are on screen now. Chris, this is my favorite part and it is the bike vault where I get to see a lot of e-bikes because I don't get to see that many e-bikes. No, that's cool, isn't it? I get it? to see normal bikes. <laughs> well, we got this one in for you first, Blake. So this is Justin from Perth in Australia. Oh. He's just fitted that SRAM XS to his Levo, making it look super clean. I mean, look at that. Just no hoses or cables look, from the bars. It looks clean. It is so clean. It's in his house. Like, would you give that? It's a nice bike. No, it's a super nice bike, but yeah. it's in his house, Chris. I want to see it out there <laughs> getting the money. It's nice. Nice. Good good work for the E-Tap stuff, man. That's freaking cool. Isn't so it? you've got Robert. He's out for his first ride in his decathlon stylus up at Braithwaite Trick Oof. Point. He says his first ride out on his E-Mountain bike. He's got a big smile from ear to ear. And it proves that you don't need to go spend no, a load of cash to have a fun to. time. You don't have to. I think that's a super nice. Super nice. Good work. Next up, we've got Danielle with an amazing rainbow shot. Oof. He's from St. Moritz out in Switzerland. And he's been out for a big ride on his Levo Expert and saw this rainbow right at the end of his yeah, ride. Yeah, look at that. Dublo yeah. rainbow. <laughs> Dublo rainbow. It's got to be a super nice ah, ride. Super nice. Yeah. So this is Lars. And he's on his GTE Verb in the Trolls Forest in Norway, which is Whoa. right outside his front door. The Trolls Forest. <laughs> yeah, the Trolls yeah. live there. I think so, apparently. I'll be careful, man. I'll be super careful. <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's nice. Nice shot. That's a nice it? shot. Cool. So we've got Robert here from Wentworth, Quebec in Canada. Mm -hmm. He's out in the intense heat where it's hitting close to 40 degrees out there. It feels like that today. It does, doesn't it? It's amazing heat yeah. here. He's riding a giant trance E plus two. That's a nice shot. I can't really see the bike, Chris. Yeah, it's a nice shot, isn't it? It's nice. Nice. Great location. Moving on, this is Mina. He needs to build out the new uh, YT decoy comp <laughs> out in Sydney, Australia. Uh, taking her out for her first ride, it climbs as well as it likes going down, and that is a good thing that is about e-bikes. Right, yeah, that's a super nice one. Super nice. Yes. Whoa. So we've got another decoy here. Now, oh. this belongs to Adam. He's got a fully custom YT decoy 29er. Coil on the rear. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? And he's riding the trails in the Michelle Michel State Forest in Pennsylvania. It's his first ride out, too. And he had to get out super early to avoid that 100 degree temperature. You know, I'm going to say that's super nice. Super nice. Well, I think that's super nice. Well, giving them away. <laughs> now this is Eves and he's narrowly, uh, looks like he's been narrowly Whoa. been avoiding falling down trees yeah. here. So he's shredding down this trail on his Cannondale Habit Neo 3 in Missanti, Belgium. 
and had to slam on the brakes at the last minute to avoid that monstrous tree. And I think of decapitation. Yeah, I think it would have uh, been a bit of a problem if you, you hit get that a headache. At 40K. I reckon. <laughs> headache. I reckon. That's uh, that's nice. Nice. No, that's nice. I like it. Nice. Cool. What so is that? So this is Anders from Boris in Sweden. He's got this Lapier GLP team. That's the 2020 edition. He absolutely loves it. In yeah. fact, he says he gives his bike a 10 out of 10. I think that's a nice looking bike too, isn't I it? I think it looks cool. You can put sandwiches in that little bottom bit yeah, there. Definitely. I think that's a super nice. Right, super nice. Yeah. Right, so it's time for the bike of the week. So this is the selection from all of these. Now, what are you thinking, Blake? Do you know what? It's I like strong, the... Strong entries there, isn't it? Yeah. But I do like that decathlon stylus. I think the decathlon stylus, that shot, as I mentioned, that bike is an amazing value. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it on previous shows, and that's coming in at under three grand, I think, around two seven, and that bike is absolutely loaded. That's crazy. So that is the bike of the week for us here on the Bike Vault. And as I mentioned earlier on this show, if you want to get involved, get your bike in the Bike Vault, hit that upload button at the bottom and get your bikes into us, and it could be you taking Bike of the Week next week. Chris, that is the end of the show. What a cracking show it's been. And it's super interesting to see two-wheel drive e-bike mountain bike. That is crazy. Really cool, isn't that it? is cool. But I let like us know it. what you think about those down in the comments box below. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and make sure you give us a find and a follow on social media too. Cheers for watching. See ya. Air 5, Chris. <laughs>